Hello, my name is Theodor. My name is Tadej. And you're watching the ultimate low light binoculars buying guide. If you wish to hunt at dusk or dawn, or merely to use a low-light binocular, you've come to the right place. So we will go through the general features of low-light binoculars, then we will show uh, practical fields of use, uh, we will explain the price classes, and in each price class we will point out at least two best buys. We categorize binoculars in four different price ranges, that's below 500 euros, 500 to 1000 euros, 1,000 to 1,500 euros and above 1,500 euros. So next we have the general features. So the most common feature that stands out with low light binoculars is lens diameter. So all low light binoculars have 56 millimeter objective lens or even more. What about the 50 millimeter? Can we use those for low light? We can, but you know, it's already binoculars with 50 millimeter objective lens are already a compromise. You're gaining smaller weight and smaller dimensions, but you're losing on low light capabilities. What about magnification? Well, actually, there are two magnifications that we can list as the low light. That's seven times and eight times magnifications. What about 10? The 10 is not listed in low light because although you gain a bit more details, the low light performance is not as good. Yeah. Uh, what about the exit pupil uh, feature? Well, the exit pupil is basically a geometrical par uh, parameter which you are able to calculate from lens diameter and magnification. And with low light binoculars, we are always searching for 7 mm exit pupil because this is the maximum value to which your eye can dial it. So, <clears throat> when your eye goes to the widest setting, 7 mm, and you have a binoculars which, ha which have a 7 mm exit pupil, you can take advantage of all the light that the binoculars are letting through. So you basically take advantage of everything that you see. Yeah. What about typical configurations? The most typical configuration is the 8x56 binocular, so a wide field of view and low light uh, performance, and the 7x50. Yeah, what about 10x56? 10x56, we do not list those as uh, low light suitable. Uh, also, we can name the 7x42, 42. which is also, let's say, not primarily suitable for low light hunting, but okay, we can use it. Yeah, basically, with 10x56, you're gaining a little bit of details, sure. better detail recognition, but you're losing low light capabilities. And the same it with 7x42, you are losing some low light capabilities, but you're gaining smaller size and smaller yeah, weight. It's a more compact binocular and so on. Yeah. What about the weight of those? Well, if you're going all in on low light binoculars, you have to expect that the binoculars will be really big and bulky. Uh, usually more than one kilogram of weight and usually quite substantially bigger than normal, let's say, 8x42 binoculars. Let's talk about prisms. So we have three prisms in the low light category. That's Schmidt and Pekan, Poro and Abbe Koenig prisms. So Schmidt and Pekan and Abbe Koenig uh, prisms are both roof type prisms. Yeah, yeah that's correct. What about the focusing on low-light binoculars? Majority of low-light binoculars have a central focusing mechanism, like all other binoculars, but there are some few exceptions we have, which have uh, individual focusing for each eye. So how can we segment those? Uh, they're really rare, uh, mostly 7x50 poro binoculars and 8x56 poro binoculars. Uh, some people still prefer them for low-light because there is a theory that when there is really not enough of light, it's easier if you don't need to focus each time. And with uh, focusing separated for each eye, you just basically set your binoculars once and then you leave it alone. What about the field of use? Well, the field binoculars? of use is actually quite easy because those binoculars are very heavy, robust and not so easy to carry around. So only for hunting? Only for hunting, not for bird watching, only for hunting. What about, let's say, hiking? Yeah, it's such a big binocular, you really couldn't afford to have it around with you. <laughs> around your neck when you're it's, going up to the mountains. It's too yeah. heavy, yeah. Theodor, we get more and more questions. How do thermal compare against low light? Well, yeah, the thermal, thermal optics change everything. Uh, I would say 
still they are really different devices. So the low light binoculars, they have an upper hand when you want to see the details, when you want to assess the trophies and so on, while the thermals, they have an upper hand when you want to detect the animals in complete darkness and so on. Will you be able to detect an animal with very cheap thermal optics? Yeah, you're able to detect, but you're not able to see the antlers, you're not able to see the actual quality of the trophy and so on. What about the predators? Well, for the predators, so the foxes and all other predators and wild boars, then the thermals have an upper hand because you're able to detect them on longer distances and much faster. The testing was done by the Optics Straight team. We had 12 members doing the test, half of those with experience and the other half with no particular experience at all. We tested more than 20 binoculars. We tested each binocular with each other and we tested them in pairs. So we established which one was better in the pair. So today, let's speak about general features of binoculars below 500 euros. So in this price class, we do not recommend spending less than 300 euros. Rifle binoculars in this segment have two to three eyepiece positions. Yeah, they are, all of them are purged with nitrogen and they're all waterproof and fogproof. Yeah? All binoculars in this segment are made in China entirely and the prism systems is roof and the portal prisms. Yeah, in the roof prisons, they all feature Schmidt and Pechen prisons. There is not a single binocular with Abbe Koenig prism below 500 euros. The housings are usually made out of plastic, majority of them. Only those roughly near 500 euros, some of them have aluminum housings. Manufacturers in this segment, they offer two years of warranty or four years of warranty. That's always a must, but Steiner is the exception to that with 10 years of warranty. Let's continue with best buys in uh, sub 500 euros class. Yeah, the first one is the Delta Optical Extreme 7x50 ED. The binocular by itself is a bit bigger, but the field of view is very good for this price range. The overall quality is very okay. Uh, the build quality, as you can see, is, uh, is, very, is very good. It has some nice flip up cars to add to that. So it performed better than the others in this test. Yeah, that's correct. The second best buy in this class, which also performed really well in our tests, is the Steiner Observer 8x56. Uh, what is special with this Steiner is also that it has a 10 years warranty compared to all others. It has a service in uh, Germany, so if something goes wrong, you're always able to ship them back and they will repair it. Um, it also features a little bit noticeable chromatic aberration compared to others, and it has a field of view a little bit smaller. But all in all, the best two binoculars in this class, by, by shown by our tests, are these two. So yeah. the Delta Extreme 7x50 mm -hmm. ED and Steiner Observer 8x56. So next we have the price class of 500 to 1000 euros. Yeah, so the magnesium housings start here, which are not found in lower classes. The eyepieces, they have three positions usually. At least. At least three some positions. Some even more, yeah. Some even more. Uh, the prisms that are used are Abbe Koenig, Schmidt and Pekan, and Poro prisms. Yeah, so this is the first class where you're able to find some Abbe Koenig prisms in the binoculars, but they are not widely spread, honestly yeah. speaking. Uh, you also are able to find open bridge design, not only single bridge, like in the cheaper models. The warranty here is better, of course. They offer manufacturers five to 10 years, depending on the model and the brand. Yeah, yeah. and they are mostly made in Japan. There are some models also made in EU and some, but not many, still made in China. Yeah. But when you go above 600 euros, that's, that, that's become rare. What were the best buys in this 500 to 1000 euros price class? Yeah, as you can see in this price class, we really couldn't decide which one was better because the differences are so minimal. But yeah. nevertheless, we have three models here. The Kite Optic Service HD 8x56, the GPO Passion 8x56, and DD Optic Spiritler 8x56. And yeah, they were so indistinguishable in our low light tests that we think that they 
maybe even have more in common than it's possible to see on the outside. Yeah, yeah both of those have, uh, as you can see, single bridge. DD Optics is the exception to that with open bridge design. They also all feature other chronic prisms. And if you would like to know more into details about the pros and cons of all of these three binoculars, please check our blog post. So next we're talking about binoculars of very high quality from the price class of 1000 euros to 1500 euros. Yeah, so in this price class we are starting to see famous optical brands and most of the products are made in EU. Yeah, the prism systems still are Porto prisms, majority mm -hmm. and Abbe Koenig prisms with the high quality ones. Yeah, and the housings are usually made out of magnesium, so there is no aluminum anymore. Magnesium and then uh, armoring of rubber around it. Yeah, they're very special because manufacturers use very high, high-end quality uh, coatings which offer better light transmission rate, so on and so forth. Yeah, and what is also first seen in this price class is that the warranties can be all the way up to 30 years. Most of the binoculars have 10 years warranty, but some of them even 30 years, uh, 30 years warranty. With such a binocular, it's, it's not all about the product, but also about the accessories that you gain with them. So accessories are better, better quality and more enriched. And also with all of these binoculars, you always have um, a promise, manufacturer promise that they will provide service and servicing of these binoculars for an extended period of time. So today, what are the best buys in this uh, 1000 to 1500 euros price class? So we have two here. The first one is Zeiss Conquest HD 8x56 binocular. It's made by Zeiss in Germany. The prison system that is used is a Abbe Koenig type. The quality of is of course extremely good and very suitable for someone who is looking for a low light specialist. Yeah, so the second best buy in this class is the Steiner Night Hunter 8x56, a Poro Prism binocular and it couldn't get more traditional than this. This is a true classic in this class. Again, it's a little bit lighter than you could imagine and both of these two really perform exceptionally well in low light. For in-depth information, please go to our blog post. So in the last segment, we have top of the line with a price class above 1,500 euros and even... Even to 2,500. Yeah. So we only have the best here and they're all premium brands, European premium brands. So size, Leica, Swarovski, Blazer. These binoculars are exclusively made in Germany and uh, Austria. Yeah, and they come from uh, companies which have uh, really long traditions. So we know that Zeiss produces optics more than 150 years, Swarovski since 1950s, some, somewhere there. Uh, Leica is also 100 years old. The only exception is Blazer. But Blazer, they have a lot of experience because they, they have been producing hunting rifles for, for ages. So all of these companies are really traditional European hunting oriented companies. So for someone who is looking for extremely good and top of the line binocular, they're suitable for professional use. Yeah, for the so best. you're basically paying the premium to get a binoculars which offer no compromise. They are the best in each, each category you are able to look at, either low light transmission, uh, build quality, uh, servicing and so on. They're, they're the best of the best. Yeah. You could say they are the low light champions in all respects. Definitely. They can also be used with glasses or without glasses. They're very comfortable to use. Exclusively, they're designed with Abbe Koenig prism systems. Yeah, there are no Poro prisms or no Schmidt and Pechan prisms in this class. They also come with really long warranties, at least 10 years, uh, but even longer. We have experience that even if you have a binoculars which is 30, 35 years old, in this price class with these companies, you are always able to send them back for repair and they will usually still have spare parts and they will able to repair your binoculars. So it doesn't matter the age, they're going to fix it. Yeah, so you're buying the premium and you're also getting the premium after sales service. So today we come to the ultimate winners, to the best buys in this premium class. Yeah. What have we seen in our tests? So we have two binoculars here, which we concluded a draw. That's yeah. Swarovski SOC 8x56 and size Victory HT 8x54. So optically, they were almost equal, eh? During near perfection, we really couldn't determine which one was better. I wish, I, I had a wish to force the decision which one is better on the team, but I didn't succeed because they're really so close. Uh, if you have a chance, try it and you will see it. But there are some other differences. Yeah, okay, so Swarovski is a bit bigger, uh, more price affordable. 
whereas size is a bit more smaller, a bit more compact, easier to use. So basically you're getting the same low light performance with both of them. You go with the Swarovski if you wish to have a cheaper binocular, well cheaper in this price class, it sounds funny, but more affordable. And you go with size if you wish to have a smaller, lighter binoculars will still offer the best possible low light performance.